Who even asked for this? Who is this for? Why did they make this? Nintendo recently randomly dropped an announcement for a new game, Everybody Went to Switch, a follow-up to one of the original Nintendo Switch launch titles at around 10 p.m. on a Thursday night. And the general sentiment shared across at least my circles on the internet were some variation of, who even asked for this? This phrase always has me thinking, and I want to talk about those thoughts, so let's talk about it. For the record, I am in no way looking forward to Everybody Went to Switch. I played the first game both before and after it released on Nintendo Switch, and while I do think the internet exaggerated the quality or purported lack thereof, it's not something I would find myself screaming from the rooftops for. I couldn't care less about who doesn't want to buy the game. That said, I do think the sentiment behind the who even asks for this mentality isn't exclusive to this, and we gotta nip this in the bud because it is A, toxic, and B, disingenuous, which I don't have an emote to illustrate. Literally every good intellectual property on the planet at one point in their life was something that quite literally no one asked for. I don't know about you, but I didn't ask for a video game about a rotund Italian man who needs to defeat the turtle dragon to save the mushroom world's princess. Despite that, it was made and I couldn't be happier that it was. On the flip side of this line of thinking, I don't know how much more boring gaming would be if it was even mostly informed by what gamers ask for. Gamers don't know sh they only know to ask for a variation of what they've experienced, and variation is usually stretching it. Strangely, not a vertical with a high concentration of creative people. If it's not just a prettier version of what developers aren't already making, most gamers can't envision it even being possible. If it were up to them, Zelda would be on its sixth Ocarina of Time rehash rather than Breath of the Wild or Tears of the Kingdom. Hell, we might not have even made it that far. Speaking of which, a lot of this sentiment toward 1-2-Switch and its follow-up is owed in part to the perceived lack of quality present in Switch's launch lineup when compared to the aforementioned Breath of the Wild. And that's just, to put it plainly, stupid. Of course the initial claim is subjective, it's not that big of a deal. I just take issue with the mean-spirited nature of it, especially given the fact that when people admit to liking one of these games, they're treated like they must just have bad taste, or that they're settling when in reality, most games released today, especially released from a studio or publisher with Nintendo's track record, are going to be at the very least enjoyable to most that play them. Unless, of course, you see a game that isn't in line with your sensibilities and expect it to win you over despite that, which is more of a personal problem than it is some sort of flaw of the game in question. Next, I want to dispel this idea that no one asks for Everybody One to Switch in particular, because while I maintain it's ultimately a meaningless claim meant solely to punch down for the sake of a funny haha, not only is what I just said reason enough to stop making these claims, they're also factually incorrect. One to Switch is amongst the most successful games on the Nintendo Switch at 3.6 million units sold as of 2021. That puts it in the top 50 games on the platform. That's more than every Metroid game ever. Not only has Nintendo released multiple Metroid games in spite of this, one of the most anticipated games amongst the very loud circles on the internet is Metroid Prime 4, a game that has been in development for the entirety of the Switch's life. Hell, it sold more copies than every Xenoblade game and we get new entries in that franchise constantly and people love it. And I'm sure you know that because that audience is way more likely to evangelize a series like that. I should know. I wouldn't be surprised if the majority of 1-2 Switch's audience never talked about any game on the internet. That doesn't mean they don't exist or wouldn't enjoy another one. And even beyond that, the majority of people I see complaining about these games never even played them. For all we know, they'd enjoy them as well. Maybe it would take playing with a particular group, maybe that happens occasionally with extended family, and while some may be weary of buying a full price game for occasional fun, look at that, the sequel is half the price. Also, let's be real, people spend the same on a few hours of fun at the movies or even more than double that original full price for a single day of fun at a theme park, concert, whatever. Let's try to be a little more realistic with the whole dollar spent to hours of entertainment had ratio here. Secondarily, part 
of the negative sentiment toward everybody went to Switch is informed by a rumor turned what we can now assume was a leak that Nintendo struggled to turn this game into something playtesters enjoyed or understood. But I promise you that happens with way more things than we'll ever know. Again, it happened in broad daylight with the most anticipated game coming to the platform, Metroid Prime. But of course, that's a game that gamers want to like, so they'll demonstrate the kind of understanding that in reality should be had in this case, at least until we actually see the game. That's when people can decide for themselves if it was worth making based on the merits of how much people embrace its value proposition and how well of a job it does at fulfilling on that promise. I know that this will probably largely fall on deaf ears. I know people will exaggerate my intent and pretend I'm overreacting, but hey, sue me. I just want more people to be cognizant of the fact that no matter how little you care for or even want to hate something, someone loves it. And the law of averages says if someone loves it, more people do or would if they gave it or in some instances were even given a chance to allow for that chance for the game or whatever it may be to win them over. And on the other side of this, sometimes just use your brain. Like I said, nearly 4 million people bought one to Switch. And it's not even like the game had a skewed trajectory to get there. It accrued that number. It's weird to see people fall all over themselves to explain away success like that. Oh, it was a launch title. Then why didn't every launch title reach that number? Especially the ones with the approval or acclaim of fans and critics, let alone this one that everyone wanted to hate for not being free. Oh, did I not mention that part of this crusade was due to people actually wanting the game but turned against it for costing money and based that expectation on Wii Sports existence as if A, it was indicative of some sort of universal law or B, which immediately disproves the last assertion, it wasn't even free in every region. But I digress. I plan on checking out Everybody One Two Switch and I hope it's good. If it's not, you'll hear from me the moment I try it myself. You're all free to avoid it or give it a try. I just think it'd be cool if we stop pretending the taste of the gamer echo chamber are law and leave some room for more nuance, but I might be asking for too much. Anyway, on a positive note, I want to know, tell me a game or really anything that comes to mind that you didn't ask for but ended up loving. Let me know in the comments. If you want to support this channel, check out our Patreon to see if any of the available tiers are a good fit for you. If you want to hang out with the community, our free to join Discord server is linked in the description alongside that and our social media accounts. Above all, subscribe to Redirect and ring the bell to be notified when new videos go live. Okay, that's it for me. See you next video.